Hi, my name is Karen Hodges, and in this session we're going to talk about a very important knowledge object called event types. By now, you've probably learned how to use Splunk as a search engine, also learned a little bit about some of the other knowledge objects such as saved searches, tags, reports, and potentially dashboards. Event types are a very interesting and powerful knowledge object, and it's important to understand exactly what event types are going to do for you. When you first look at event types, they're going to look an awful lot like a saved search. But I want to illustrate to you today that they are much more than that. If you're looking simply to save a search criteria so that you don't have to type it over and over again, you should use a saved search for that. Or if you're trying to rename a field value combination, then tags are the appropriate object to do that. Let's take a look at what event types can do for you. I'm going to go ahead and start with a search of password fail star and we'll look for that over the last 24 hours. You'll notice that as the results come back I have two kinds of events in my results. I have those that are failed password for invalid users and I have those that are failed password for valid users. And perhaps in my environment, these two different kinds of events are important for me to differentiate. So I'm going to build a search criteria that's going to identify each of these two types of events in my environment and create event types out of them. So if I look at the first example, failed password for invalid user, it looks like I can add the search phrase for invalid user to my search criteria. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Remember that when we use search phrases, we must include in quotes. So we go ahead and add that to our search criteria. And certainly I've gotten the right results back from my event list. Notice here I have failed password for invalid user for all of my results. So I'm going to go ahead and create an event type out of this. Over on the right hand side, just above the timeline, I'm going to click the create button and click event type. Notice that my search string has copied over and now all I have to do is give this event type a name. I'm going to give this event type less risky. This is less risky than someone trying to log into my system that already has a valid username. If they have a valid username, they're 50% of their way breaking into my system. In this case though, they don't even have a valid username yet. You'll notice at the bottom of this box that we can tag our event types. But let's hold off on that for just a minute. We know that tags relate to field equals value combination, but in this case I'm doing a search for password fail star for invalid user. So how is that a tag? Well, we'll see in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Now I'm going to build a search criteria for my other kinds of events. And in particular, I'm going to search for not invalid and let's check and make sure that that's an appropriate search criteria. And in fact it is because you'll notice that my results are now failed password for and then a valid username. So just like before I'm going to click the create button just above the timeline on the right hand side and click event type. Once again I'm going to give it a name and this one I'm going to call risky. I'm going to go ahead and click save. So you'll notice from the blue bars at the top of my view that my two event types have been saved, less risky and risky. So now I'm all set. Now I could go ahead and do a search for event type equals risky. Well that's interesting, but I could have done the very same thing by creating a saved search. Because remember, event type equals risky is simply a search criteria of failed password star not invalid. And if I created it as a saved search, I wouldn't even have to type in the search bar. I could simply select from my searches and reports menu and execute my search. So there must be more to event types than just not having to retype the search criteria over and over again. And in fact, there is. Let's go back to our original search of password fail star. So you'll notice here that I'm getting events for password for invalid user and also password for valid user. 
Also notice that in the field sidebar I have a new field called event type. And notice that there are two values in the event type field in my current results. If I click on the field in the field sidebar, of course I get to see the top 10 values and I only have two so I get to see them all. And notice what they are, risky and less risky. Splunk has automatically categorized each of my search results based on my event types. So at search time, Splunk compared my results to the event types that I created. And if the events match the search criteria for the event type, the event type field is set equal to the name of the event type. Well, that's a lot of words, so let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and add event type as a selected field. Remember, selected fields display below our events. You'll notice that the first event matched the event type less risky, and so event type is set to less risky. The same for the second, third, and fourth events. But at the fifth event, this event matched the search criteria for the event type risky, and so event type is set to risky. So Splunk has automatically categorized my results based on my event type definitions. So now you can see that event types are much more than a saved search. There's this automatic classification that's going on. That's not zero work. It's very powerful, but it's not zero work. So be careful to create event types when you're going to use them, not simply for the purpose of creating event types. What's really interesting about event types is now you can go ahead and build reports based on this information. So if I take my initial search and I pipe it to the stats command and do a count by or for each event type, you'll notice that it's telling me how many events of my search criteria fell into the less risky category and how many fell into the risky category. And at the click of a button, I can get a visual of this. So event types are a very powerful knowledge object that allow me to automatically classify events based on a search criteria. In addition to that, event types are stored as a field. So if I go back to my event list and I look at my events and now I have this field equals value combination. And recall that we can tag field value combinations. So let's say that I've gone through my environment and created various kinds of event types that classify events in my organization. And some of those events are events that I want to be attentive to, and some events I don't need to be nearly as attentive to. Or maybe some are falling within compliance and some are falling without compliance. So I can go through now and tag my event types accordingly. So if I tag event type equals less risky, this is less risky, so this is okay in my environment. Not that I'm not going to pay attention to it, but it's not something that falls out of compliance. I'll go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice that that tag has been added to the event type. For the event type risky, I'm going to go ahead and tag this one as not OK. This is definitely something that I need to keep an eye on in my environment. And so you can imagine that if you have classified different kinds of events in your environment by creating appropriate event types and tagging them as OK and not OK, with one search, I can now look for all those things in my environment that are out of compliance by simply searching for tag equals not OK. And you'll notice in the event type field that I have found only those events that are risky. So event types are a very powerful knowledge object that you can make use of in Splunk to help classify your events, which is very interesting for reports and dashboards. But remember, they're more than just a saved search, so while it's handy to be able to search for event type equals value, if that's all you're looking for, go ahead and use a saved search. But if you want to do this type of classification, event types can do the job. Notice the power that you get by combining event types and tags together and hopefully you can come up with some really creative ways in your environment to make use of this combination of knowledge objects. Thanks for watching and have fun creating event types.